Number 23. Name the following compounds. All right, so this is going to be the first question out of many in which we're going to now be talking about just how to name both ionic and covalent compounds. There's a lot to memorize here, and we have A through F, so hopefully in these, you know, 10 or so questions, we can get down the rules for how to name the compounds, all right? I'll try to go as quickly as I can, and yeah, let's get started. All right, so for A, so I'm going to put A over here we need to name CSCL. The first thing that you're always going to do in order to find out the name of a compound is to find out whether it's an ionic compound or whether it's covalent. That's always the first step. CSCL, what do you think that is? Is that ionic or is that covalent? CS is a metal and chlorine, CL, is a nonmetal. That is Ionic. Remember, ionic is always a metal with a nonmetal. Covalent are all nonmetals. So here I have a metal and a nonmetal, so I know it's ionic. So now I'm going to be following these rules. Now there's two rules. You have to worry about whether your metal is a main group metal or a transition. So that's like the next step. Once you find out that we're going to be talking about ionic naming, you then have to say, okay, well, is the metal in the main group or is it a transition metal? Main group metals are in groups one and two, 13 all the way, actually not, not even because metals really don't even go this far, right? Remember metals are all just over here, but I'll still say the same thing. Your main group is 13 all the way to 18. So one and two is your main group. 13 all the way to 18 is your main group as well. 3 to 12 is your transitions. So that's the difference. Does your metal fall in this category and this category as opposed to in the middle? Now, it's chemistry, so there are some exceptions. If they come up, I will be the first to let you know. But let's just pretend that there's no exceptions, right? So cesium is over here. This is a main group metal, right? So whenever we name a compound that's in the main group, all we have to do is just state the metal name, and then the nonmetal gets the IDE ending. That's it. There's no talking about Roman numerals. There's no charges. You don't have to worry about that. No di, tri, tetra. It's just the metal name and then the nonmetal IDE. So in this case, CS is cesium. So that name stays. And then CL is chlorine, but it gets the IDE ending. So it would turn into chloride. So if I just erase that and I just put a IDE, that's the name of this compound. CSCL is cesium chloride. Easy as that. A is done. Pretty simple, right? B, B A O. First thing we got to figure out is, is it ionic or is it covalent? Barium is over here. Barium is a metal. Automatically, any compound that has a metal in it is going to be ionic. So this is an ionic compound. All right, well, then we take to the next step. Is the metal in the main group or is it a transition metal? Well, barium's over here. It's part of group two. That's the main group. So I follow the same exact thing as we did before. The metal name stays exactly the same, and the non-metal gets the IDE ending. So BA is barium. O is oxygen, but the non-metal gets the IDE ending, so it's, it turns into oxide. So that one's a little tricky. So oxygen will turn into oxide. And that's it. It's barium oxide. And just know that there's a space between your metal and your nonmetal. So it's two words. And B's done. Moving on, C. K2S. Is it ionic? Is it covalent? Potassium is over here. Potassium is a metal, right? It's in the yellow. So it's automatically going to be an ionic compound. And now, is your metal in the main group or is it a transition? It's in the main group, it's in group one. So same exact 
method of naming it as before, the metal name stays the same. The non-metal gets the IDE ending. So K, I'll just write it over here. K is potassium. And that stays exactly the same. S is sulfur. But you drop the ending and you add the IDE. So it would not be sulfur. It would be sulfide. That's it. And that is the name of this one. So K2S is potassium sulfide. And take note that I don't even care about how many of the atoms that I have. I don't care that there's two potassiums. I don't care that there's one sulfur for any of these, right? The naming is the same exact thing. The metal stays the same. The nonmetal gets the IDE ending. So now let me quickly just erase this. I think I could get most of it and then I will erase. Yeah, I'll just erase this. Okay. So now we're moving on to D. So C is done. Now we're on to D. B E C L 2. Ionic or covalent. Beryllium is over here. It's a metal. It's a yellow. So it's definitely ionic. Is it a main group or is it a transition? It's a main group element. It's in group two. So the same exact idea as before. Uh, the metal name stays exactly the same. So this would be beryllium. And now Cl is chlorine. But remember, we drop the ending and we add the IDE. So it wouldn't be beryllium chlorine. It would be beryllium chloride. And that's it. And I'll put it in the same color. There you go. So D would be beryllium chloride. Notice how I don't care that there's two chlorines. The name still stays the same for ionic main group elements. Okay, now E. HBr. Ionic or covalent. Hydrogen is over here. That's a nonmetal. Bromine is over here. That's another nonmetal. So here we have our first covalent compound. So this will be a little bit different from the naming that we've just been doing. All right, so now we have to put this into our group. Now I wanna put over here that anytime that you see hydrogen in the front of a compound, chances are it's going to be a acid. So now we're in the acid categories. There is a specific way for naming acids, and there's a specific way for naming just regular covalent compounds that are not acids. Now, there's two classifications for acids. You have binary acids, and you have oxoacids, as what I wrote over here as well. Binary versus oxoacids. We have to figure out what this compound is. Binary means that your acid is between two elements. It has to be between hydrogen because that's what makes an acid. Hydrogen always makes an acid an acid. So that has to be standard. And then you have just another element. So whether it's a nitrogen or an oxygen or a, you know, fluorine or a chlorine, you get the drift. But here, that's the case. We have hydrogen and we have bromine. So this would be classified as a binary acid. Oxoacids, just to put it in perspective, this would have three different elements. This would have a hydrogen because it's an acid. It would have to have an oxygen because it's an oxoacid. And then usually in the middle, you'll see another element. So whether that's a chlorine or a bromine or an iodine, Whatever it is, um, that's classified as your oxoacid as opposed to binary. Bi means two. Okay. Now here, they didn't give us any hints here, right? Because technically, there are two ways that you could write binary acids. And they didn't specify which way. So let's just do two of them. So acids... Binary acids can exist in two different states. It can exist as a gas, and it can exist as an aqueous, meaning that it dissolves in water. And 
depending on whether this is a gas or whether this is aqueous, it has two different names. So I'm just going to give you the two different names just because they didn't specify here. And it's good to know the two different names, especially for a quiz and test. So if it's the gas form of a binary acid, the naming always goes like this. You always just state hydrogen in the front and then your non-metal with the IDE ending, all right? So it's basically the same ending as the main groups, your non-metal with an IDE. The only difference is that it's just hydrogen in the front as opposed to all of your metal names that we had here. So in this case, it would be just hydrogen. Bromine turns into bromide. So that would be the answer if they said HBr as a gas. If they said HBr was aqueous, that's a different naming system as gases. So this hydrogen nonmetal IDE is the gas way. The aqueous way is by saying hydro blank ic acid. And in here, you put your name of your nonmetal. So in this case, for HBr, it would be hydro bro mic, not brominic. You have to still simplify it. So you kind of just get the feel of when you should put an ick in there. So hydrobromic acid. And actually, the hydro and the bromic should be one word. So I'm just going to squish these together, just like that. All right. So just depends. This could either be, I'll put it over here. This could either be hydrogen bromide, or it could be hydrobromic acid, depending on if this was a gas or aqueous. And that's the answer for that one. All right. Last but not least, let me just erase this. And if you need it to be on the screen a little bit longer, you can always just pause the video and then just gather everything that I have down and then we continue from there. So last but not least, we have, I'll just, yeah, that's fine. So last but not least, we have F, which is ALF3. So going back to the beginning, we need to find out if it's ionic or if it's covalent. Aluminum is over here. It's a metal, so automatically it's going to be ionic. Is aluminum in the main group or is it a transition metal? It's part of group 13. That's a main group metal, so... Basically, what we've been doing besides HBr, right? It's just going to be metal with the non-metal IDE. So aluminum, Al, remains aluminum. Aluminum. And then F was fluorine, but now it gets the IDE ending. So it would be fluoride. That's it. And I think that's, that's already an I there. So I, D, E, there you go. So it would just be aluminum fluoride. And that's the end for this one. All right. So a lot of different, um, rules here with more practice. You guys will definitely get these inside and out. You'll know it like the back of your hand. And we got like 10 more question problems just with naming. So if you guys want to do them with me, you'll be golden for your test quizzes or whatever. All right. So thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. If, um, you know, if you would like, you can click the subscribe button, help out the channel a little bit. You can like the video, whatever you would like. We totally appreciate you guys. All right. So thank you so much. I'll see you guys all in the next question. Have an awesome day.